What's up, challengers? Welcome to the gym. My name is Gym Leader Geo, and this is the locker room, week eight of the fifth season of the GBA, as we go over what the Giantes team prep will be for our match against Mulvone 19 and his team, the Cincinnati Loudrids. He's got a, a, a much more offensive team than a majority of the league. And I've got a pretty defensive team. So we're going to see how this kind of plays into the dynamic that's going to be um, our teams matching up in this um, in this very eventful week eight. Uh, I'm going to talk very briefly about week seven because uh, there's not much to say about it. Uh, we had a disconnect on Wi-Fi and then we had Showdown refuse to work. And then when it finally did work, uh, we had issues with my own personal fault uh, bringing a level 100 Pokemon to a level 50 battle and then we had recreation issues and uh, I only had one day off that week and was trying to pack both a social life and um, GBA match uh, and video editing and everything all into one day and uh, not gonna lie came home with a, a little uh, uh, alcohol in my system so it made everything even harder and there was just there was no possible way for us to get it to work without completely restarting the match, which would not have been fair to John. And you know what? He's had his fair share of people demanding he do things that are unfair for him in the GBA in the past. And I'm just not gonna, I'm not gonna be that guy. I will gladly take a, uh, the forfeit is a 3-0 loss. If I hadn't showed up, if I hadn't been able to play this week, that's what I would have taken. And he was a great guy about it, and I'm really sorry. I had a full team uh, team builder video to show you guys, and uh, I actually felt like I did. I was pretty prepared for his team, and then I uh, it just things just did not work out last week. That's all I want to say about that. Go check out his video if you want to learn more about week seven. We're moving on to the future. We're putting the bad blood behind us, guys. I swept it to the lower left. To you guys it looks like the lower right that's not really behind us that's kind of that's sweeping it aside i'll deal with that stuff later you guys can <laughs> what <laughs> what uh let's go over my team for this week as you can see on the screen here we are bringing eggington the blissey cuddles the mega pincer decisions the entei the red one the latias remix the ditto and zoolander the vaporeon um i am I'm pretty excited for this matchup, but he has a lot of different ways he can look at the offense he wants to bring, and his defense, I'm just, I'm prepared for them, but they can't really stop me. His defensive mon are not wall capable for my offensive core. Um, for example, let's just go over his defensive mod before we start analyzing the offensive mod. Well, let's just go over his entire roster. He's got Weavile, Landorus T, Mega Manectric, Azelf, Gastrodon, Typhlosion, Noivern, Zangoose, Fortress, Dusk Noir, and Gallade. And it's a real ragtag team of offensive mod, uh, a decent mix of wall breakers and glass cannons, um couple but lead potentials and stuff like that his defensive mon now he could you know anything could be a defensive set but let's talk things that have the potential to be defensive roles in this game landorus t can be a defensive mon can be his rock setter um can try and like pivot for for his team to build momentum uh, Gastrodon is a defensive mon, Fortress is a defensive mon, and Dosh Noir can be a defensive mon. Um, we can talk a little bit about Gallade maybe trying to be defensive, but really best case scenario for it would be to run an assault vest and just try drain punching for, for recovery, but I really don't see that happening. Looking at his team, Gastrodon is the only thing that really has a potential to wall my offensive mon, and it does not wall Cuddles. Cuddles can two-hit KO a physically defensive Gastrodon. Um, in addition to that, uh, Decisions this week is bringing Hidden Power Grass. So as you can see on the set here, he is a Choice Scarfed, Sacred Fire, Extreme Speed, Stone Edge, Hidden Power Decisions. Um, he is running Max Speed... Uh, adamant nature. He has to be adamant in order to have sacred fire and extreme speed. And he is running uh, max speed in order to speed tie or speed beat a choice scarfed jolly landorus. 
That is the reason for his EV spread. Um, I talked briefly about decisions, but I want to go back to talking about his team. The reason I talked about decisions is to show that I have an answer for Gastrodon even on decisions. So if his only defensive switch-ins to Cuddles and decisions is going to be a Gastrodon, and there's a decent chance it will be, he doesn't stand a chance. Fortress, also a defensive Mon, gets two hit KO by uh, Cuddles' return. Uh, it will not live a Sacred Fire. It's just, it's not a good matchup for him on the defensive side of things. Dust Noir can be pretty bulky, but again, it's not gonna be able to withstand the firepower of um, Sacred Fire, especially if it's gonna burn him. His best bet following up that would be to try and pain split and live another one, but it's not gonna do, it's not gonna bode well for him. And uh, same thing with Cuddles, just in general, his defensive mon don't bode well. Landorus T is a unique mon in that if it runs defensive, it's going to be an okay answer to decisions and cuddles uh, given that it can pack stone edge and can do pretty well in that regard but if it's defensive it absolutely cannot touch any of my other pokemon it's like a decent check for cuddles and decisions but it means that eggington walls it the red one walls it remix walls it by becoming it and thus walling itself and Zoolander walls it. It cannot do anything if it's defensive, which is why we'll go into what I think his six mons are gonna be this week. I think it's Weavile because he looks at my team and thinks, hey, Ice Weakness. I think it's gonna be Landorus T, and I think the Landorus T is gonna be Scarfed. The Weavile could be just about anything. My guess is that it will be Adamant um, with enough speed to outspeed Latias. And I think it will be uh, either Life Orb or Choice Band. If it's Choice Band, I actually, I kind of want it to be Choice Band, but I think he'll go Life Orb. Um, I'll have to do some calcs early after I see damage and then determine whether he took, um, took the Life Orb hit or not. If it's, because uh, there's a good chance he could be Expert Belt too, but I I'm definitely seeing, I'm predicting probably Life Orb for him. That's usually what he goes. Uh, then he's going to have, probably going to bring Mega Manectric. The reason I think he's going to bring Mega Manectric is because I think he's going to highly value Intimidate this week um, to provide additional safe switches into Decisions and Cuddles um, because they are both physical threats and they're both pretty threatening to his team. And uh, it does provide him a decent switch into Cuddles uh, if he's predicting a return. So that's kind of how I'm seeing those three all coming. Um, the thing is that Mega Manectric is not a problem for this team. I'm bringing Eggington, and Eggington can wall this Pokemon for days. And for that reason, I really need to keep it around. Because without it, while I do also have answers, for example, um, the red one can also take a majority of his attacks. Even HP Ice from a modest Mega uh, Manectric is not the end of the world for me. It's just, he, I'm going to have to predict and play around it a little bit. And he does have the potential to get momentum with this mod because that's what it does best, but I'm really not that threatened by it officially. The Azelf is a potential problem. I believe he will bring it because he's brought it quite a lot. I think it'll be his stealth rocker. Um, and I think it's going to have explosion. I think it's going to want to get rocks up and try and take out something. And it's a bit of a problem. And if I see him bring it, I think I'm going to have to lead with Remix because I'm going to have to immediately figure out what its set is. It will almost certainly have U-Turn because he does have a very momentum building team and I think he's going to want to play off of that. So I think it's going to be a U-Turn as Elf. Um, it will probably pack a stab move because it's going to want to. I think it'll have Stealth Rock and Explosion. That said, it does have the potential to learn a fire type, fire type coverage to take on Cuddles and he may opt to do that also. So uh, part of what I want to do is lead with Remix and get a vision of what he has. If he has both Stealth Rock and U-Turn, I click U-Turn right away, uh, predicting that he'll go for Stealth Rock. I bring in Cuddles and I get a quick attack off to either scare it out or finish it off. That's my goal for how I counter an Azelf lead. If it's a mid-game sweeper, then Eggington will wall it for days, and I'll just have to try and get Remix in as soon as possible to try and get a vision of what type of Pokemon it is. Um, Gastrodon. Uh, his best wall, I think it's a, a good chance he brings it because he's going to want to have some semblance of safe switch-ins to things, especially to Entei, who otherwise really threatens his team. Um, 
He'll probably predict banded Entei because most people do. Most people sleep on Scarfed Entei. The reason I'm bringing Scarfed is that it allows me to outspeed Weavile and Oko it. It allows me to outspeed Azelf and do really well. It allows me to speed Ty uh, if I need to stay in just to get uh, crucial damage on the Landorus. I can do that if I like really need a burn. It allows me to outspeed lots of things, actually. Um, <laughs> the Noivern, um, even though I don't... It's not a great answer for Noivern because I'm have to, I'm gonna be relying on Stone Edges against it, and I will go down if I miss. It's still it's gonna be beneficial to be able to outspeed it, and I don't see Noivern being scarfed on his team. The most likely scarfers are Landorus and Typhlosion. If he brings both, I'm thinking Typhlosion is Specs. Um, and other than that, yeah, that's that's pretty much all I see for those trailing off at that point. Typhlosion is it's. It can be very powerful if it's specs, but again, it's walled by Eggington. Uh, another big reason, I, you know, I'll start going over my team now. I, I think I've gone far enough with this. Eggington is one of the first Pokemon on my roster. The reason I just immediately knew I had to bring Blissey is that looking at his specially offensive Mon, um, many other special offensive oriented Pokemon are capable of in the league format taking on a Blissey because a lot of the time they are able to pack decent physical move pools um, or very powerful Psy Shocks or something like that. Looking at his team, Mega Manectric does not have that potential. Uh, the best it can opt to try and do is Thunderbolt it and it's not doing more than like 30% even if it's modest. So it gets walled for like just days. It's going to be a really safe switch in for me. It's going to be able to build me momentum by wish passing off to whomever I want or just shoring up Eggington or getting free rocks. As you can see, my move pool here, Stealth, Rock, Toxic, Wish, and Protect. Um, opting for the Wish and Protect over going um, Seismic Toss and Soft Boiled because... Uh, Protect allows me to net just an extra turn of leftovers against some threats if I'm repeatedly coming in and I'm repeatedly passing my wishes off to others rather than keeping them for myself. So it's it's to increase the support capability of Eggington. Um, looking further down his roster, you see Psyshock on Azelf is really not going to be touching Eggington unless it's fully... No, it's not touching it. It cannot two-hit KO even if it's a Specs Modest... Uh, Psy Shock. It's not going to two-hit KO Eggington, and if it's that, I will notice it immediately and be able to switch into Remix or the red one and take it on further. Um, Gastrodon can be special. It's not laugh too long at that one. Um, Typhlosion, again, it just doesn't have... It doesn't have any of the fighting coverage necessary or the power behind it to really take on a Blissey. Noivern, same way. It even has Focus Blast. It even has Focus Blast, but again, with... A, Failing it being specs modest and me, I still have a switch into that. I can switch into the red one or the re or remix again or Zoolander. I have switch ins to uh, his even in these completely bizarre scenarios where his special Pokemon might be designed in a way to try and take on Blissey. They're not going to be able to take on Blissey. The best thing they can possibly do is pack U-Turn, which Noivern and Azelf um, have, or Volt Switch, which Mega Manectric has, and just try and pivot around it, but they're gonna have a hard time. So, um, Eggington is just there. It's my safe answer to his, uh, specially offensive Mon. We're bringing Cuddles with Return, Quick Attack, Earthquake, and Swords Dance, obviously Hyper Cutter. Um, it's max speed adamant this week, as opposed to, uh, as opposed to Jolly, because I'm not worried about the Typhlosion, I'm not staying in against the Typhlosion, and I want the extra firepower. Uh, I am still, when I Mega Evolve, I am still able to outspeed the Landorus T, even if it's Jolly. Uh, however, it's probably going to be Jolly Choice Scarfed, and I'm going to have to scan for that really quickly because I'm there's no way I'm staying in against one in a fair 1v1. They both get brought in together uh, because that's uh, it's too risky uh, early on because you might have the Stone Edge and pop it off really quick. So I'll have to do something around that. So I don't need the, I don't really need the speed. So the firepower is going to be great for me. Um, the it'll allow me to quick attack him twice and for a kill. I think I'm able to do. Let's not get too into specifics of calcs here because those are very um, 
specific scenarios. Decisions I went over a little bit earlier. Scarf because I think the speed matters more than the uh, raw, the brute force of a choice band set. His team is very flimsy. I don't need to be trying to pick up Oko's because I, he's a good player. I predict his his team is worse than it was last year. But Mulvone's a good player. He demonstrated that last season when he went was it seven and three. Uh, and I got one of those wins against them. So let's try and keep that train rolling. The red one is here in a mixed offensive support set running Draco Meteor, Roar, Defog, and Roost. The special attack investment is because I didn't feel that I wanted to bring Latias as a, as a wall. I don't think I needed that. I think I needed it to have the firepower. That said, there's not a reason for me to not go for Draco. Um, because the Pokemon that I don't, I wish I would hit harder with another move other than Draco. It, it's too few and far between. So, like, I could pack a Fire-type move for Fortress, but it would have to be Hidden Power Fire. And I just feel that Roar, Defog, and Roost are going to be more important to me. This allows me to switch in on a bulk up... Uh, a bulk up Gallade set, survive the knockoff and get a roar to get it out of there if I'm worried about it, or just Draco meter it to try and take it out if it's at a health pool that is appropriate for that. Um, it allows me a potential roar scenario for several other Pokemon. It, it allows me to roar on potential switches. It allows me to roar out if... Um, if I get a switch in on a Landorus and I predict it to be a Rock Polish or Swords Dance set. Um, and it allows me phasing potential if Gastrodon keeps coming in trying to like toxic me or something like that. Uh, it allows me to win Stealth Rock Defog Wars against Fortress also. I could Draco the Fortress. It can Rapid Spin as I... or. It can stealth rock as I defog, and then I can roar it out as it stealth rocks. I'll defog again. It depends, you know. It just allows me the ability to phase should I need it. I want to have a phaser on this team. Um, defog because I, I, I'm i going to try and keep hazards out of the field this time. I don't think he's going to have a great opportunity to keep them on the field. I think he's going to notice that his uh, Landorus gets whittled down pretty quickly this week. And I have too many safe switch-ins for it, so I think he's going to let it go relatively quickly. And uh, I just want to keep the I want to keep the field clear of rocks as much as possible to allow Cuddles to be a switch-in for certain situations, not just a revenge killer that tries to sweep near the end of the game. Remix is really clutch against this man's team. Um, good examples are it resists both of Weavile's stab. It resists. Um, Landorus T, any Landorus T set. Landorus T and Land is a safe switch into Landorus T, and I'm going to use that to my full advantage also. It is an amazing switch in to Mega Manectric before it's pre evolved, and I'm hoping he doesn't lead with Manectric. One potential thing I can see is he wants to lead with Manectric to get the speed boost right away, so he leads with it. And I'll lead with mine, but I will outspeed with my choice scarf, unfortunately, so I can't. One, the reason I want to have him lead with an Azelf or something like that, so that I can lead with Remix to counter that, but if he pulls a switch on me and leads with the Manectric instead, the reason I don't want that is because I want Manectric to come in on a situation where it thinks it's good, like z against Zoolander. Zoolander gets a kill, or, or he just makes a good switch into Zoolander. As a regular Manectric, Mega Evolves and clicks Volt Switch as I switch into Ditto, Obviously, the switch into Ditto happens before he Mega Evolves, allowing me to be a regular Manectric with Lightning Rod, who will get a Lightning Rod boost uh, from the Manectric, and then be a Choice Scarf, so plus one speed, uh, Lightning Rodded, so plus one special attack, regular Manectric, who is basically a Mega Manectric. So I think that would be cool. Uh, I see that happening. I see the potential for that happening. And that's a great reason for Remix. Again, it just means that his three most potent OU threats are kind of handled by Remix on their own. His lead Pokemon is going to be... Uh, a, it's going to be a great scouting opportunity for Ditto to come in against that. Uh, we've seen in the past, actually, because I believe he had a Gastrodon last season, that Ditto can switch in on a Gastrodon and be safe also. Uh, eating up potential Scalds. 
uh, with the storm drain ability and then allowing me the potential to play around that uh, see what it's got if it's packing toxic or something I can talk to get back Remix really does give me a lot of a lot of answers for a good number of Pokemon this week Zoolander is coming this week and he is going to be Scald, Wish, Protect, Heal Bell with Water Absorb, a physically defensive set, and no item. The reason for this is it allows Zoolander to be a switch into an Adamant Choice Banded Weavile. It allows, it forces Weavile into a situation where even after rocks it, two, it cannot two hit KO me. The strongest move it can have is Knock Off which will lose power after the knock the original knockoff it could run night slash but that's a i mean that would be some next level prep if he brings night slash and even then it would have to be a choice banded adamant night slash to even have a chance to you know i'm really curious i might have to calc that but i think it'll mess up my uh my recording set so i'm not going to do that um i'm running the wish protect because i want the reliable recovery the Protect obviously doesn't necessarily need to be there since it's not buying me extra turns with leftovers, but I need it because I need to guarantee that that Wish goes off. Uh, I can't just assume that his Weavile is going to switch when it sees the Wish pop and it didn't do 50% to me with a hit. Heal Bell because I want to make sure that we're not getting too many dangerous Toxics spread on Pokemon that I need to keep relatively healthy until key threats are gone. Uh, it'll definitely help me a lot with keeping Remix healthy. Remix is going to be a big pivot switch for me this week, especially because he has a lot of momentum gaining Pokemon. So that's the reason for the Zoolander set. Uh, no item, of course, as I mentioned, to reduce the knockoff damage. There's a lot of potential mock offers. This set is great. It allows me to survive an adamant explosion from Azelf. It allows me to wall um, a Scarfed Landorus T. Uh, while still retaining enough special bulk to be a great switch into Typhlosion and into Noivern. Um, the issues we kind of run into with his team prep, and why I said he can go a couple of different ways with this, if he really wants to play a Ice Sack -a -mon and do some damage game, Zangoose and Gallade are both potential brings for him. Zangoose, of course, has the toxic boost facade scenario going on, which makes it hit really hard on the uh, on the physical side. And I don't have an amazing answer to that, but it's if that if he does end up bringing that and we do find ourselves in that scenario, there's still a couple of things I can do. One is that Zangoose is not very fast. And it has to run the Toxic Orb, so it can't run Scarf. And a good number of Pokemon on my team will outspeed it. Zoolander will not, but it won't one-hit KO Zoolander. Remix is it, so it, it'll be fine. Uh, the red one will outspeed it. Decisions will outspeed it. Cuddles will outspeed it. And I'm if it comes in on an Eggington, I might just have to sack Eggington in that scenario or sack someone else. But as you can see in, in this scenario, it, there's not very many opportunities for it to safely come in. The biggest one being if Blissey gets a kill, it gets a free switch in, or if it really well predicts a switch on Blissey's behalf. So I have answers to it. it. But it can come in some scenarios where it sacrifices its own life just to do a lot of damage to one Pokemon. Gallade can do the same thing. And that would be interesting if he's going to build his team around a lot of momentum grabbing Pokemon with the exclusive goal of having Zangoose come in, commit suicide by taking Toxic Orb damage and uh, getting outsped a single turn. Because even if it gets a kill, I come in with something that can revenge it and the next Pokemon that comes in is going to be in a lot of trouble because again, he doesn't have the bulk. So that's the full rundown of the team this week, guys. I do hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. Uh, maybe give me a subscribe if you haven't already and I'll look forward to seeing you guys at the match tomorrow. As always, my name is Jim Leader Geo. You guys are the challengers. Thanks for stopping by and I'll see you guys next time.